Okay, namaste. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be across the planet, around the world. My name is Greg Prescott from in5d.com, and you're tuned into another Zoom live. Uh, this is interesting. It was supposed to be on YouTube. Well, we, we're still on Zoom, obviously, but it was supposed to be on YouTube, but something came up, and here we are on <laughs> Facebook. So this is going to be interesting uh, how this turns out. Anyway, it's the first time I've done a Facebook live like this. So bear with me and hope it all works out in the end. Anyway, so um, hmm, I'm going to post a link on Facebook into the chat. Um, if you guys want to join us here on Zoom, I'll be giving you the link here in a minute as soon as I find it. <laughs> and we'll get rolling here. All right. So you guys in the chat, there you go. If you want to join us in Zoom, you can. All right. So first thing I want to cover actually is, so I've been on this diet and uh, well, you know, because of the quarantine, I, I put a little weight on like most people, a lot of people, many of us, um, you know, we're not as active and, uh, you know, I know I was guilty of eating a lot of food. I probably shouldn't have eaten a lot of ice cream. Um, pizza and <laughs> stuff that I really enjoy, but I enjoyed it way too much. And I ended up putting some weight on. I got all the way up to, I don't know if you can see that, 230 pounds. And so far I've lost 12 pounds. And I started 10 days ago. So uh, 12 pounds in 10 days. So um, it's coming off. And what I'm doing basically is the, uh, the Atkins diet. I'm like, screw it. You know, I know that, you know, the, the protein is probably not the greatest thing once you had a heart attack, but uh, <laughs> I'm still doing it anyway. And I'm losing weight. I'm eating food that I do enjoy eating. Um, but now today I kind of threw a little twist into it. The only thing I've had, I've only had one meal. And what I, I do is I stop eating around five, six o'clock, whenever my last meal is. That way I fast. It's called intermittent fasting and I fast throughout the night and I don't eat again until, you know, nine or 10 o'clock the next morning. So I'll go like 16, 17 hours without a meal. Um, but today I just had one meal and uh, I've been drinking uh, the eight juice. Now I do know that that's loaded with salt and you're probably going to, uh, you know, retain water and this and that, but you know what? It's still, I'm, at least I'm getting my vegetables. I'm having that one meal of protein. I'm going to go on and off with that for a little while. And then I'm going to jump over to the fruitarian for about a week just to cleanse everything out. Um, so I'm basically using my body as a guinea pig and we'll see where it goes. But so far it's gone really well. 12 pounds in 10 days. Really happy with that. Also, uh, on a side note, I do take my blood pressure every day. Uh, we noticed that when when we have these Schumann resonance uh, whiteouts, there is a correlation to uh, your blood pressure actually uh, normalizing. If uh, if you do have higher blood pressure, uh, uh, your your lower number will drop sometimes um, in thir about thirty one third of the uh, cases. Uh, that lower number will drop and. I just took my reading before we went on tonight and uh, my reading was 103 over 75, which is normal, which is great. I'm happy with that. Um, since the heart attack, I, I had elevated blood pressure. And what was interesting too is before the heart attack, and uh, you know, I, had, I would take my uh, blood sugar and that would be around like 110, 115. It was like almost pre-diabetic, but now it's like, it dropped significantly. I'm, I'm, I'm like 65, 67, something like that. So it's almost, almost too low, but um, I don't know. We'll get that worked out as well. So um, at least it's not diabetic. I think I'm heading in the right direction. So anyway, let's move on. Uh, today's high pitch frequency is a D sharp. Okay. So what is a D sharp? A D is one of those cusps. It's like if you're cusping on a horoscope or, or on the zodiac a d sharp is it's on all right we're looking at the a string the second string down fifth strat in, uh, fifth fret in that's a d that's an e so a d sharp is right in between but in a much higher frequency than what you're hearing right now much much higher many octaves higher than that um, so that's a cusp it's right between the d and the e uh, and 
So that the, the sacral chakra would be your D and the E is the solar plexus. So you got the sacral solar. The last time we had a high pitch frequency, we were looking at the C sharp, which was the root and the sacral chakra. So we're looking at these lower chakra frequencies in the last few days with the high pitch frequency. So apparently uh, that's, that's what we're getting right now. Somebody's uh, telling me, Greg, did you know you're not on YouTube? Yes. <laughs> I'm live on Facebook. Hang on. I don't know if she can hear me, but live on Facebook. Yes. So yes, and to those that are watching right now, yeah, I wasn't able to get onto YouTube for whatever reason today. Uh, they said something about your quota has been maxed. I didn't know I had a quota <laughs> and it, it'll be readjusted uh, at midnight. So whatever that means, I have no idea. Okay, moving on. We have some cards that I, that I drew. And uh, the first one we're going to start out with is the, we're going to do the uh, Work Your Light Oracle Cards. I just got these. Matter of fact, that's what Allie did. Uh, she was reading from these the other day on her channel. And I just got these in today myself. So uh, the card that I drew for all of us is Trust Your Path. Okay. So if you knew you would be supported what would you do? The universe is conspiring. Keep facing your true north. Your job is not to pave the path, but to simply keep facing your true north and take one step after another. If you do this, you can't go wrong. The universe is conspiring. Don't waver or doubt. Use your heart as a compass and put one foot in front of the other. If you follow the invisible trail of what lights you up, you will light up the world without even trying. Most people don't follow the highest call of their soul because they are waiting to see the end destination before they take the first step. If you, are one, if you take one baby step each day, within a year you will have taken 365 steps in your, de in your dedicated direction. If you want to write a book, write a page every day. If you want to change careers, do one thing every day in dedication to that. Before you know it, in just a year from now, you will turn back and look in awe at how far you have journeyed. Keep moving and open yourself up to a whole new level of support and receiving. Things are not going to work out the way you are planning but if you have a little faith and keep showing up, they will work out even better than what you could possibly imagine. Don't micromanage the universe. Trust your path and let your soul lead the way. So that is that. And what's interesting too, yesterday, so I get these cards, right? And I, I draw a card for myself. And it was the, uh, the Sisterhood of the Rose. And I thought, wow, what a great card because, you know, okay, so this is what it said. The Sisterhood of the Rose is a lineage of priestesses and mystics who devoted their lives to serving humanity and seeding light consciousness all over earth. A cross section of ancient lineages is the path of devotion and beauty. And it goes on, it, but that's the gist of that card. And I thought, wow, what a great card. So, you know, I'm, I'm shuffling and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to pull a card for Allie. What do I pull? Same thing, the same card. So yeah, the, the sisterhood of the rose card for both of us. So that was pretty cool. So yeah, that, that was from Rebecca Campbell's Work Your Light Oracle Cards, okay? Now here's another new one that I have and it's the Psychic Tarot Oracle deck from John Holland. I got this from Allie. Thank you, Allie. And I drew everyone a card. It's card number 10. And it is destiny. Oh, to get back to the last one, though. You know, and trusting your path. I love that analogy that they had. You know, if you're writing a book, write one page. And after, after a year, you'll have 365 pages. 
sometimes we feel overwhelmed. And uh, when you're feeling overwhelmed, look at this challenge as going to a buffet and just filling your plate full of food, forkful by forkful, your, your, your plate will get small. Well, the, the food on your plate will get smaller and smaller before it's all gone. Uh, so eventually it will uh, be empty. Your plate will be empty. So uh, try not to be overwhelmed, especially right now. There's a lot on everyone's plates right now. So going to the, the Psychic Tarot Oracle Deck by John Holland. Now, normally what we do are the um, spirit messages from John Holland. So this is just a different deck from John Holland. And as I mentioned, we have card number, number 10, which is Destiny. So good luck and fortune are now in your favor. A cycle of change, success, and growth is imminent. Life ebbs and flows in its natural journey, and the destiny card signifies that good karma has come full circle. Lady Luck is pointing directly at you. What you sowed, you are about to reap. Open up your heart and accept and receive what you've, what you've earned. Oppor opportunities, whether expected or unexpected, are knocking at your door. This is a time to allow your problems to be replaced by solutions. Believe in destiny and you learn to let go of old issues. You're being given the chance to understand the lessons and gain the wisdom from the past, enabling you to move steadily forward in a positive direction. Holding on to a strong belief that you deserve to be happy and prosperous and have abundance in all areas of your life is the key. This confident mindset will show you that the impossible can indeed become the possible. With this card, take advantage of all the opportunities. Act now, take responsibility for your actions, and enjoy the fact that destiny is presently in your favor. Don't always rely on luck, however, for the wheel most definitely will turn again. So that card would be in tarot, the wheel of fortune, right? And lastly, we have um, some cards, three cards that I drew from the Everyday Witch Tarot deck from Deborah Blake. And these are the cards that I drew for us. So interestingly, uh, two of these cards I actually drew for Allie yesterday. And I shuffled the bejesus out of these. And I picked one card and I'd shuffle again. I'd pick another and but we ended up getting two out of three that I got for Allie yesterday. But so anyway, the first one is the hermit. Okay. So, you know, what's the hermit doing? Sitting there, very relaxed, meditative state, going within, right? Going within, look for the answers, going within. Pretty simple, right? But something's going on. Here, here we have, you know, this person waiting for the ship to come in. Come on, Titan. Come on. Yeah. Got to mute, James. There we go. Uh, so here we have, um, yeah, waiting for the ship to come in. This could be ideas. This could be, uh, you know, maybe something long distance, a long distance idea. Um, something maybe going overseas. Um, something is coming in um, from far away. It could be an idea from somebody you know that's maybe halfway around the world. Um, something is com going on. The uh, wands are thoughts. So maybe new ideas are coming in from far away. But we're once again going within. Within our last card, though, is um, the Nine of Cups. Similar to the, look at the Nine of Cups and the Hermit. Basically, really, really similar in their positions, except look at the look on her face. She's very content, right? So what this shows me is that when you put them all together, your inner guidance will show you exactly what it is that you need. Um, if you're thinking about doing something, perhaps uh, a new idea, a new beginning with something, uh, an idea that you per perhaps have been thinking about for a while, um, put it out there, go within, uh, and the end result will be from going within. It'll be contentment 
from going within. So, you know, this one, your contentment, uh, that, that is the end result. So be confident. You already have the answers. The answers are within. Okay. Today's, oh, we already covered that. Oh, let's do the Schumann resonance right now. Um, okay. Hopefully everything is um, going well on Facebook. I apologize to those who had been expecting to see us on YouTube. That ain't happening. <laughs> Not tonight, at least. Um, so, but here we are on Facebook and we're able to still bring you this broadcast. And I will upload this to, uh, to YouTube later on. So here's uh, today's Schumann resonance chart, and you can find this chart on N5D. All, all these charts are on N5D right here, you know, on, on the main menu, live Schumann resonance charts. And here they are. And you can find out more about amplitude and frequency, you know, what whiteouts mean, what blackouts mean, even uh, anomalies like this wave that we had, and what some of these Schumann resonance spike symptoms are and additional Schumann resources and articles as well. But, and I'll leave a link in the more info section on the YouTube video for these. Uh, but this is what we're looking at at today's Schumann resonance. Um, we did peak out in the amplitude at 22 Hertz, nothing spectacular. We're seeing these patterns going on here. Once again, looking like perhaps a heartbeat, dum dum, 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 dum. but it's becoming almost repetitive. It's almost looks like it's looping. So, you know, just to put those in perspective, um, maybe something is going on that's looping. Maybe we are experiencing a, a loop in time. I'm not sure, but boy, don't they look a lot alike with the exception of this little stuff going on up here. But even so, there was still stuff going on here. It was just a little bit more powerful right there. So let's take a larger look at today's current Schumann resonance. What we're, what are, this is what we're looking at right now. We're looking at it slowly download, apparently. <laughs> there it goes. Uh, yeah, so we're looking at perhaps yet another pattern of this coming from perhaps these, these two patterns are being repeated here once again, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. So this is something I wanted to show you guys. This is the most recent um, sealed indictments total. The total is 169,981, almost 170,000, but almost 19,000 have been unsealed and the sealed remains total is 151,000. So there's still 151,000 sealed indictments out there that will be um, unsealed here in the very near future. Um, if you remember my prediction, I, th I, th I think that they're going to start this uh, upcoming month in June. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this unfolds in the next month. This is interesting too. These are the to top total cases by state. I would have thought uh, because of Hollywood, California would have been number one, but they're actually number two. Texas is number one. You might ask yourself why, probably because of the child trafficking from Mexico. And I would say that's probably the same reason for Arizona and New Mexico and California. So, and then, so Texas, California, Arizona, New Mexico, right? Being the top total cases state by state, then New York, Pennsylvania, a couple Northeastern states, Florida, Ohio, Virginia, and North Carolina. Those are the top states with the most uh, sealed indictments. Uh, so most, most likely this is there, I, from what I understand, this, there's a huge child trafficking center um, in the center of Texas. So we're going to be seeing a lot of this stuff getting broken up. And this is why, you know, the wall really does need to be built um, in Mexico to prevent the child trafficking from going on. 
So this is interesting. I, um, I posted this on my Facebook page. Is there an incoming galactic super wave, right? This was posted by Cobra on Twitter who said, so what we're about to experience is not only the galactic super wave, but a cosmic shift on the scale never experienced since the creation of the universe. See if that comes to fruition. And it wouldn't surprise me if that is what is the event, you know, and that would be huge. <laughs> so um, here, I posted this yesterday, uh, President Trump to sign executive order tomorrow, which is today, regarding social media, no further details released. Well, those media, those uh, details have been released now. And uh, it looks like we're getting protection, finally, from censoring. And let's hope that that includes shadow bans on Facebook and all the uh, banning that's been done on Twitter. So, you know, Mark Zuckerberg and Jack Dorsey, you know, your, your time's done. You're getting called out, finally. Um, knock off the bullshit. So that, that's definitely good news. This is interesting too. So, yeah, I've, I've heard some talk in the circles about, you know, is John F. Kennedy Jr. Alive. As a matter of fact, I have an article on InfID called JFK, Trump, and the Q Connection. And we'll get to that in a minute. But here on a Q job of number 529, this was back on January 13th, 2018. Q says, hello, George. Now, initially when I saw that, I figured, okay, well, it's hello, George Soros. And uh, thinking, okay, well, we're on to you, Soros. Then I thought, well, what if maybe maybe it's George Bush? You know, uh, you're not going to get away with anything. But what if the George is this? Let me show you this this George. Um, and I posted this on Parlor. This is a new. I'll go get into this in, in a minute, uh, but I recommend joining this. And, and if you're on Twitter, get off of Twitter, join Parlor. It's a lot better. But is Q referring to JFK Jr. right here? Hello, George. George is the magazine that JFK Jr. published. That's the magazine that was in the article right here, George, right? This was Jr.'s magazine. So what if... What if that is JFK Jr.? What if they staged his death and he's really, he really is still alive? This was posted on Twitter and it was on George, uh, the George's uh, Twitter page. When does the clock run out? Well, what's interesting is his father, his birthday is coming up on the 29th. Today is the 28th. Does the clock run out tomorrow? Will we know, will he be introduced to the public? Wouldn't that be something on his father's birthday? So just want to put that out there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know one way or the other. I'm just putting it out there, okay? So just food for thought, just interesting stuff, right? Okay, so this is called Parlor. Parlor.com. Why is it better than Twitter, number one? you can have at least a thousand characters versus 300 and number two they don't censor uh, so um, no censorship and more characters so i've only posted three times <laughs> somehow i picked up six followers without telling anyone about it and uh i'm following 12 people on here right now so join me on parlor it's greg at n5d and uh, you'll find me here as well and I'll start posting our spirit chats in here too. Okay, so yeah, here's that that tweet by George. When does the clock run out? So it's gonna be interesting to watch that play out. Okay, lastly, let's get to it, right? So this was a post on Pars Kute's 
page. The event 2020, incredible 5D energies impact Earth, Pleiadian light forces transmission. So the Earth Alliance has confirmed that at approximately 10 p.m. Monday night, light forces fired two powerful 40 hertz 5D gamma light beams toward planet Earth from two different directions, locations in Earth's solar system early this morning. Right in the middle of the second gamma blast, the Schumann resonance went dark for a period of 2.5 hours and a strong frequency shift was imprinted on the Schumann resonance graph late yesterday. Many star seeds around the globe are well aware of this powerful energy shift as it happened. It was communicated that during the energy blackout last night, the frames of time and events on Earth were literally reset again, furthering aligning planet Earth and its beings with the new Earth VTXC crystalline diamond light grid. I'm not sure what the VTXC means, this thing right here. These diamond shifts are being intelligently orchestrated by benevolent star beings working to assist planet Earth in its next stage of evolution. What is a timeline shift and why does it show up in the energy around planet Earth? A timeline shift is a literal temporary state where the universe reverts back to a quantum zero time and zero matter state. The dark matter point detected in the energy of the cosmos the black line on the Schumann graph shows the switched off state. Human level consciousness usually has no awareness or recollection of these timeline shifts. However, very aware beings notice that something shifted and changed and that reality was reset. So those would be the uh, energy sem sensitives and the super empaths. If you look very, very close at your reality, one after, after one of those resets, material things now exist that never existed before or a thing that you remember existing now never happened. I was just talking about that the other day. That's interesting. Um, during that Schumann resonance um, whiteout that, and blackout that we had. It can be a bit perplexing to wrap your mind around this, but it is a very real phenomenon that billions of people notice. The timeline shift was the drawing of the cosmic line in the heavens be between light and dark, and a point of no return was marked in the fabric of time by benevolent light forces. These blackout areas in the space-time field are literally switching off of the universe and back on again. These brief timeline shifts are quick, dimensional on and offs for the purpose of slowly stabilizing the new 5D energy around the planet. The Mandela effect attempts to illustrate these radical timeline anomalies. These resets are positive and are required to shift from one dimension up to a faster vibrating one. As we said in previous transmissions, the new 5D gamma timeline is 100% locked into place for the future of this planet and the outcome is known. In data transmitted around the Earth Alliance last night, light forces have said the, this latest Earth timeline reset is part of an operation masterpiece and will serve several positive functions over the next three months for the citizens of humanity. <clears throat> and these are the functions to help bring new 5D Earth systems online after the traumatic 3D system failure of the past three Earth months, the COVID BS, right? To now allow the new energy of freedom and truth to become dominant energy among the Earth civilization, to clear remaining primary anomaly and negative etheric and astral entities from the surface, allowing more light here this will cause the beings of Earth to begin tending to exhibit a more positive behavior to usher in the final energy required for the grand event, culmination 2020, which all Intel says will occur near the end of this year. Now, that I'm not saying that. That's not my prediction, but let's hope that this is true, if not beforehand, right? 
So from the reports we are receiving, the star seeds of Earth all feel as though they are about to leap out of their bodies this evening. This feeling is due to the recent rapid increase in frequency around the planet. Higher realms are crashing into 3D with great force and the energetic pressure of this dimensional clash is tremendous as you can feel it all in your body and your auric field. Powerful cosmic light rays from the central sun located at the galactic center core are coming into earth on a steady basis now as beams of central sun akashic light data like the two that impacted last night hit the earth at speed well over 1 million miles per hour these 40 hertz light rays carry pa packets of nano-sized magnetic ionized particles that strip right through the human body genome clearing out all lower vibrational energies instantly and recode DNA to a higher order. So if nothing else right now, make sure that you're putting that intention out there to um, raise all, uh, to open up all the codons in your DNA and RNA. All right. Sorry about these pop-ups coming up here. As the light comes in, the new 5D crystalline cell light body is formed and developed, and this causes some major disruption, to say the least, in the auric field, the physical body, the mind, and the emotions. A, a frequency change of this magnitude is so abrupt, it can jar your system quite a bit. This high frequency photon light had an intense impact on the star seeds of planet Earth, and right now, strong ascension symptoms are being reported by all around the globe. The highest Pleiadian teaching is only, high, only vibrate high. This is how you ascend to the top of the universe. Remember, a thing only exists when you focus on it too much. This also means that things you aren't focusing on cease to be. This is quantum physics 101. What do you wish to manifest? The Pleiadians say everything changes on a collective level in November. Are you ready? So that's pretty interesting, pretty exciting. You know, I, I always find it interesting when people put out dates like that because I've never been given dates, but they're saying by the end of this year. So with that being said, I'm gonna open, I'm gonna unmute everyone. What do you guys think? You're all unmuted. Well, no, you aren't, you're still muted. No, you are, you're, you're unmuted, I think. I've been Unmute. getting a lot of time anomalies. Okay. So the last few months I've been getting so many collapsing timelines. So it's been coming in like packets of memory data. So all of the timeline that I've currently existed on in this life, I've been getting, they're, they're coming in like packets of memories and they're collapsing in on each Ooh. other. So it's the core energetic frequency of my experiences. Uh, all the experiences are collapsing in and the one lesson at the bottom has been like collated. And then everybody's been saying to me lately, they've been getting a lot of deja vu, but it's not typical deja vu. It's the energy. So we, people have been saying, I'm experiencing deja vu, but it's the same energy. It's not the same. It doesn't look the same. I haven't lived this experience and I'm like, oh, left or right, I've got to make a different choice here. It's oh, I've experienced this energy before. That it's, so it's like this same looping of the same energy, but it's coming in a completely different frequency. So that's what you're seeing on the Schumann resonance, that looping going on right now. And you're feeling that as, as yeah. a physiological symptom of that, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's, that's good. Good to know. I was wondering, how did you uh, handle the, the Schumann blast the other day? I've been lucid dreaming and astral traveling like never before since these changes it's it's insane how not physical the bodies become okay okay mm. um I, I i i tend to dream a lot i go instantly into the dream state and i dream all night but my dreams have been very very intense uh, lately so um I, that's that's one of the ones you know and, and a lot of us are those um dream travelers we just do that we do a lot of work in our dreams and because we're multi-dimensional we can do so many different things at the same time 
But uh, I find that right now, more than ever, the dreams have gotten definitely more um, intense. So you're you're finding that astral travel and um, lucid dreaming is something that's telepathy is easier than ever now. Um, astral uh, like remote viewing is just so much easier now. There's like a I was actually timing it a couple of months ago that I, I was getting up to like a 30 second ahead on what someone was going to say. So I was at, like, I've been sort of trying to link up with the Schumann resonance, how much ahead of time you can get if you stay on that side of it. Oh, wow. That could, that could be pretty exciting and confusing at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> time doesn't confuse me in the slightest. It just makes total sense to me. Right. Right. So, so yeah, it's just awesome what's going on. Tell us the lottery numbers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> that service itself. <laughs> I know. But boy, wouldn't that be funny if it were true, though? How, how is everyone else doing with these um, energies? What do you think about those 5D energies? I think today I went shopping with two dogs in walmart here in titusville you know and it's you know sort of zombie apocalypse but not super bad you know and um it was really cool i just like i said i just walk around like i literally walk around and like i'm just like every time i come across people like in my head i'm going my light is the strongest light for my energy you know i just over over and over and over and over like what katie taught me and but today I met a, a beautiful lady and um she was star lady and just started talking and wonderful and uh uh it was really cool to, to meet somebody in public that I don't know in any other way and to actually have somebody to talk to and be so like already like know what we're talking about, you know. I, I loved it. It was it was it was pretty cool energy, I guess. I, I bet you she was not wearing a mask. No, no. <laughs> she absolutely no. She she lo she was petting on my dogs, and we were talking about this and that, and talking about the energies, and yeah, just it was cool. I had to go shopping today. I had to go to Walmart and buy some stuff, uh, and uh, I would say probably. 90% of the people in there had masks on. Yeah. I, I went to go get my driver's license this morning over in Merritt Island, right? And so it's a uh, Brevard County tax collector. It's in an old Walgreens. And so I go in and I've got my scarf that I wear all the time. And, you know, my backpack and, you know, so it uh, says face masks. Everybody's got to wear face masks, except for not one employee who was behind the bulletproof glass, you know, to keep us dangerous citizens back. You know, we're the ones that are dangerous. We got to wear the masks. So when you had your picture taken, did you have a mask on? No, they let you take it down for that <laughs> moment. I, I begged them. I was like, can I take it with it on, please? Like, I'm wearing it all the time now. I don't care if the coronavirus totally disappears. This is the new normal for me. Fuck y'all. I'm robbing y'all bitches if that's what you think. You know, like, that's, I, I don't know. I just, I love wearing my, my scarf in public because to me, it's hilarious that everybody's running around like this. And I, I love it. So it was funny, though, because, you know, first off, for years, they've been putting up bulletproof glass everywhere because we're the public and we're the bad guys, you know, and, 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 but here we are, we're the ones coming in, paying all the money for the taxes, paying the money to get my license again, because I already have a Florida one. And But they're not wearing masks because they're not dangerous. Even the, even the sheriffs that were sitting there, you know, watching everybody and hawkeyeing me like a motherfucker. And I, I, uh, there was someone who is a friend of ours. Uh, I don't want to call her out right now, but uh, we were... FaceTiming the whole time and I was just like, Yeah, look, look, it's like fucking 1984 in here. <laughs> I should have I should have went live, man. But it was weird. That that was weird. But I just again I just kept my light. I'm cracking up at everything. I'm pointing it all out to everybody. You know, like 
do you see like what why does if we got to wear a mask why is the sheriff standing there not wearing a mask mm -hmm. ah, i hear you i don't understand I, but i think it was confucius that said it, it, it if you're if you're not confused you're not paying attention so did, did they actually have that rocket launch yet i did they have it the other day i have no idea no, no. i got scrubbed yeah are they, are, are they all wearing masks underneath their helmets? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't <laughs> That'd know. That'd be funny. <laughs> Great for tourism, you know. It, uh, they go to the restaurants, so my friends get extra tips, and uh, you know, it's good for business. They people buy gas when they come to visit, even whether it goes up or not. They're buying gas to get back to Orlando or where, Tampa or wherever they came from. So. Mm -hmm. really nice then they were all driving past and i was just sitting out there with the dogs like just watching them like it'd been raining for four days it's raining that day like i wouldn't have driven out for that <laughs> but no i wouldn't it's not that big of an interest yeah. to drive three hours for me or however long it would be to go there well it's become like they've built a whole park you know, and they've got benches and all this kind of stuff, and it's a thing. It's got swings. Yeah, it's it's a thing. You know, it's an event to go to. I guess. I just I watch the first like three seconds, five seconds on the TV, and then I step outside, and I watch the rest because it'll be above the tree line by then. And and when when is it happening on Saturday? I don't know. I don't pay attention anymore. <laughs> It's supposed to be Saturday at three something, but there's it's an eighty percent chance of rain. So that's I like the night now. one. The night ones are the ones that I pay attention to because they're pretty cool looking. Yeah, those are pretty cool because it lights the whole freaking sky up. And the Ball SpaceX ones look weird. They look way different than the old launches. They kind of like make a bubble through the air yeah so. they're small that's why you know those big shuttles they used to send off are like gigantic these little missiles are nothing man that's why it makes a little like you said a little ball remember i took that picture of the one a couple years back it actually looked like an angel flying it flying in the sky so uh, just real quick i uh, i noticed on facebook uh Lee is asking, uh, is your YouTube working? Uh, yeah, it is. But uh, for some reason, I wasn't able to get on with Zoom. And at the last minute, we did Facebook. So here we are. I didn't have a chance to tell anyone else about that. So I've posted the link in Facebook. And here it is again. If you want to join us on Zoom, you're more than welcome to. Um, so how's everybody else feeling about that, you know, the 5D energies that we were just talking about? Pretty banged up. Back pain, abdominal pain, head pressure. It's crazy. Hasn't been this bad in a long for me. You're young, too. You're only, what, 41? Something yeah. like that? Yeah. yeah. I too young to be having those kind of aches. It was right from the right from the middle of my back, right to the chest. It's crazy. Wow. And that I'm dying. <laughs> I don't think that's the problem yet. No, no. I got the same pro I got the same problem, Ryan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I've think everybody has the back pain. I mean, I've had spinal stenosis been diagnosed because I realized when I was about five, I actually did a pretty damaging thing to my back and I've had it all my life. And then when they had an MRI done a couple of years ago, when I, my prosthesis broke and I fell on concrete, I was told that I had all kinds of old injuries that I wasn't aware of. I mean, I apparently broke my wrist. I broke my collarbone before. And I mean, yeah, now I've had an MRI where like my L4 and L5 are <clears throat> right on each other. They're just like grinding all the time. But, uh, even with that, I've had extra pain lately, especially during the, the big Schumann resonance. I mean, I usually 
don't sleep when I, during the daytime. When I nap, if I get an hour's nap, it's unusual. And that night we had the big whiteout and blackout. I took a nap starting at about one in the afternoon. I woke up at seven at night, and I was just so discombobulated because I didn't know where I was. And it was just, it was just damn an me. So, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to echo, yeah, man, it's not just you. It's everybody, I think. And not just that. Uh, we've gotten people talking about uh, they're not eating as much as what they had been eating in the past. You know, we're getting people that are just like nibbling stuff here and there. And uh, you know, all I've had today was a burger. Yeah, but that that was me, perhaps on my diet. But is anyone else having that kind of? Um, yes, I. I mean, fluctuations. I, I was I was really stoked because I'd finally gotten my A1C down after years and years and years of being diabetic. It was right where it should have been, or under seven. I quit eating, you know, when all this really about a week ago. It's just like all of a sudden my appetite disappeared. I mean, I just ate my first meal right as I logged on with you guys. You know, I've been going all day, and I've all I've had was a yogurt this morning. That was it. You know, wow. I wasn't hungry. Yeah. You know, well, my my blood glucose now is like. Boom, you know, like everybody says that they they maybe have higher blood pressure. It affects people like me too, that it's really throwing my my blood range out of crazy. And I mean, right now I'm I'm about like three hundred and like I say, I just ate the first real thing I've had to eat today. So it's not just what I put in, it's what's the energies that are slamming too or you know, driving my blood sugar crazy. Normally, when I'm above 300, I'm just waiting for somebody to say something to me so I can, you know, but now I don't have that. I just, you know, I'm, I'm able to kind of maintain, you know, that even strain, even though usually when my blood sugar gets above 200, I turn into an old grouchy bar, you know, as they say. So it happens. On, on, on Facebook, uh, Devin Porter saying that I woke up with a knot in my neck uh, and Katie uh, Kitty Ward is there. Hey, Katie, join us here. Um, a, she's saying a lot of light workers are in pain in various places in their bodies. A lot of neck area problems. So, yeah, but you know, as I mentioned earlier, though, what was interesting, I found that my blood pressure actually went down. It's it's actually normal right now, 103 over 75. I just took it right before we went on 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 air. So yeah, actually, that surprised the hell out of me. Usually it's about like 124 over 78, 90, whatever. I don't know. The lady I met at Walmart today, you know, we started talking about light workers and stuff. And one thing she did bring up is about light workers being under spiritual and physical attacks. I don't know if anybody else has had that. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. Hi, everybody. Hey, Diana. <laughs> How are Hi. You so one of the things they were mentioning in that article was uh, you may be experiencing ascension symptoms. And we can just go over the, the list real quick, you know, and see what people are experiencing right now. Um, here's, here's one of the many lists that are out there. Uh, we can just go over this one though. And this one's, you can find on N5D and I'll put a link in the more info section. 24 spiritual ascension symptoms. All right, the first one, feeling as though you are in a pressure cooker or in intense energy, feeling stress. Who's who's feeling that? Brian? Jack? Yeah. Uh, Diana? I can, well I've, well, I've got this thing up. I really can't see anyone else. I can see one, two, three, four, five, six pictures. So, um, yeah. And if you want to jump in anytime. Number two, a feeling of disorientation, not knowing where you are, a loss of a sense or of place. Sometimes when I'm driving, I'll be like, shit, where the hell am I? I did that today. Thank you for reminding me. I was talking to Allie on the phone. I didn't know whether I was heading north, south, east, or west. I had no idea where the hell I was. Yeah. <laughs> she, she distracted me. <laughs> uh, number three, 
unusual aches and pains throughout different parts of your body. We were just talking about that. Can I say something on this one? Sure. So I tend to find that pain will be a blockage somewhere in one of your chakras. So if you're having, if we're getting this influx of light, wherever that light is hitting a resistance in your body is where you've got a blockage. It, you could pin it down to the chakra area that you're in. So if you like that's, it's a really good like pinpoint on what it is that you've got a blockage in you. So wherever that pain is, find that area, that chakra, work on that chakra. You'll notice that next time you have that influx of light, it won't be as painful. And you can okay. work on that through selenite is fantastic. So selenite holds light codes. So when you got that pain in that area, but instead of waiting for the influx of light to hit you and bring that pain out, you can use selenite to work through that pain, work through that blockage before you get hit. That's a great oh, what's point. The, what's Go the ahead. one in the lower back then? So lower back, so your front and your back chakra. So I'm finding a lot of people with back issues because that's the back of the chakra, which is the things in the past, the things behind you that you're not looking at anymore. So the lower back, see if it if it's right down the lower back, it'll be root chakra. If it's just up, like, I don't know how to explain it. I've got a, like a little mole there so I know where that chakra <laughs> sits, but that'll be sacral chakra. Middle back is your solar plexus. Then All right, sort so of lower, 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 <laughs> uh, and pelvic. Yeah, so that's back, root chakra. Whatever. Root chakra. Okay. Yeah. That chakra work will be your biggest friend right now for these light codes, because all that your chakras are all vortex points and they're all opening up. So. That's why we're all having pain in different chakras. Yeah, I'm having a lot of Charlie horses, even in my arms. What's that? Charlie horses, you know, cramps like in the back of your leg. Okay. The calf of your leg. But I'm getting yeah. it in my arms here too. Okay. It's a similar type pain in my arms. So I kind of figured it was from all of this energy. Mm. And it yeah, was, I, 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 I've been kinds getting of Charlie things. horses a lot all throughout my, ever since I've been diabetic. And one thing <laughs> the doctor told me actually works really well, <clears throat> drink pickle juice. Just open up a jar of pickles and drink some of the juice and the uh, Charlie horses will ease off. They, they do for me anyway. It works great for me. I can't say it's going to work for everybody, but he's one of these old country doctors with more of a homeopathic approach than throwing pills at stuff. So... It's because it your your body's lacking potassium. Uh -huh. yeah, mag magnesium mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. potassium. And bananas. So bananas are your best friend. Spring yeah. water. They didn't have any at the store. They didn't have any fruit today or yesterday or the day before. I'd start looking up <laughs> local farmers. Yeah. And we salt baths. Uh, magnesium and salt. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. On, on Facebook, uh, Elaine Carlin was saying that my, my kidneys hurt so bad that I thought they were going to explode. Now, Stephanie, didn't you say that you had kidney issues? Yes, I did. It was like a stone, and then it went away, and life was good, and then right. it came back today. Oh, no. What's going no. on with Schumann? So maybe I have an actual stone. I used to get them. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, whatever. <laughs> so, huh. Kidneys store the energy of fear. So, but not only this fear from this life, it'll carry past life fears. So if you come in and you've got, traditionally you've got kidney issues, you've got past life fears that you haven't let go of. Uh -huh. So kidney always, yeah, I always find kidney trouble is resolved through cleansing fears or removal of fears or past life regression work. Huh, interesting. Yeah, um, it's good stuff to know. Yeah, I've done a lot of work in this life and actually, uh, past life stuff has been brought to this stuff from my family line for me to resolve. Um, and so honestly, for the my entire 62 years I've been here, I am at the lowest fear I've ever been. But it could be the energies are kicking up whatever toxins are left stored in the body. So yeah. Thank you though. Thanks, Jackie. So Vera is saying on Facebook, she's been having pain in her left arm with question marks there. I, I, 
I don't know, you might be able to answer that also, but the only thing I can tell you on that is that the left side and QHHT is a past <laughs> life. So you may have something going on with a past life, perhaps injury that you've had um, on your, in your left arm. You may be transmuting that. What, what do you know about the, the left arm? So I find a past life as well, but left arm carries feminine energy. It'll hold the feminine energy. So pain in that left arm can usually be like a blockage of that feminine. So the left arm's the ability to receive to receive that nurturing, to grab hold of the nurturing. So there's a blockage in there about, I would say it's probably linked to worthiness, like feeling worthy of being taken care of or worthy of being nurtured or supported or a stiffness, like if she could be, trying to learn how to do it so there's like a the muscle is not strong it hasn't been it's not a tool that's been used very often mm -hmm. that makes Possibly. sense yeah yeah cool appreciate that thank you let's move on to our next one and like i said anyone just jump in whatever you want um waking at night between 2 and 4 a.m now that's one that uh, for for me, I, I I can't sleep anyway. I'm, I sleep like an hour at a time and wake up and fall back asleep. Um, but uh, I usually have to wake up and pee anyway. But and I've been going to sleep later at night. <laughs> so Ellie and I have synced our our waking and sleeping schedules together. What, what time are you guys going to bed? Are you waking up? Do you find that you're waking up at a certain time? I've been going to bed way earlier than I normally do and pushing to sleep as long as I possibly can. I have been exhausted. I'm normally up till one, two o'clock in the morning and at sunrise, I'm up again. I get about four to five hours of sleep. That's been for years and years and years as a truck driver. I learned to do that, you know? Do you nap at all during the day? No. Wow. No. But I have been extremely tired here lately. Um, Carlene is saying that it's 2 a.m. in London, UK. Can't sleep tonight. So the energies are keeping her going. She's not alone. What about, what about the rest of you? What, what's going on with your sleep patterns or habits? Anything I'm unusual? Tired. I'm tired right now. I want to go to sleep now. And if I do, I'll be up at 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> every day every day i find i usually take a nap anyway maybe it's because i turned 60 this year and i'm, I'm at that age where i need naps i don't know <laughs> i'm gonna call it a couple of years early okay <laughs> <laughs> uh number five is memory loss does anyone feel like they've had issues with memory loss I feel like it's been the opposite. Yeah. I'm having all these memories of things come back that I'd forgotten. Mm -hmm. So like it literally, it's happening 30 times a day. I'm like, oh my God, I remember that. Like it's literally like any veil that was put in me in any length is just disappearing. Like I'm having conscious recollection of everything. Mm. That sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> tiring <laughs> yeah yeah anyone else with uh memory loss i can't remember <laughs> <laughs> what'd you say <laughs> you laid it right out there i had to i had to put one on it yeah i had a top you on that too <laughs> That was yeah, good one. <laughs> Definitely. Seeing and hearing things. Is anyone seeing like things out of the corner of your eye or hearing things, you know, that probably no one else is hearing? Oh I, yeah. <laughs> talk about it. I'm having Energies. a lot of additional vision. I mean, I'm seeing sometimes shapes, but definitely like there's bugs everywhere, but there's no bugs, you know. I'm seeing but then there'll be for like part of an outline. Um, I've always had like way over the top super hearing. My nickname is Super Ear. Um, so that <coughs> can apply. But yeah, total visual difference in the last week. Yeah. And I, uh, 
I keep hearing my granddaughter before she actually speaks to me. She'll come into the room and speak and then I'll look and then she'll come in the room and speak. She's done that like three times this, this week. That's awesome. <laughs> That's great. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> As I thought it was kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> and it kind of, it's kind of like, you know, the, the trails on my hand. I see that as, as she's coming in too, you know, and then you it's like, that, you get that on acid. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, well, I'm not know. doing acid today, but you know, something interesting on, on Facebook, Corey, <laughs> Corey is saying that I've been seeing things and hearing what sounds like music on a radio in another room, but I can't figure out what it is being said. Me too. I, I was just going to say, that I've heard that too. Same. I've been getting it coming out of dream state. Like in Inception, they play the music to pull you out of dream state. I've been getting that. Same. Hearing like 50 scratchy music off a radio and then waking up and it disappears. Yeah. Yeah. Th that, that happens to me a lot too. I'm, I'm sleeping and I hear something that wakes me up. And then when I wake up, I realize that I didn't really hear anything because there's nothing going on. I hear birds chirping outside. But it's like, it's like a, a voice or a broadcast or something that's, you know, you can just barely yeah. hear it. So raise your hand, raise your hand in this chat room if you've had that experience. Quite a few people have had that. That's, that's I, I keep hearing, I keep hearing bird, like I'm, I'm in my living room and I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. And all of a sudden off to the side, I hear like birds chirping. And I go look and there's no birds. And so I open up the window outside, there's no birds, but yet I still hear these high pitched little chirps going on. And it's like, mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, you know, I'm, I'm obviously picking up something that's not actually here, but maybe it's from another dimension or maybe it's from my past. Or, I, I don't know. Time you know lapse. Bleed over. That's yeah. what I was thinking too. Density bleed over. On, on Facebook, Marcus is saying, high frequency pitches in my ears beyond normal tinnitus. Yeah. Uh, and I, that's one thing because I do hear high pitch frequencies. I have noticed them being a little bit more intense yeah. lately, uh, more refined. And they seem to be coming in more on the right side, current life, something definitely on the right side. Um, so uh, I did something tips. stupid when I was a young man, I would go to like Iron Maiden concerts in Germany and stand right in front of the speaker stack, you know, and just let them, because I love, I love hearing the bass actually reverberate in my chest. That's what I love about live music. And I noticed one time I was there for so long, listening so hard. When I left, I was staggering like I was drunk. And everybody was going, oh, he's had too much to drink. And I'm going, all I had to drink was Cokes. But, you know, <clears throat> and also, unfortunately, due to a young man thinking it would be funny to toss an artillery simulator about five feet from my head. I don't know if anybody's ever had one of those go off near him, but it. It actually simulates an art and a wee blam kind of thing, you know. And ever since then, I've had tinnitus. But like you say, Greg, I'm hearing like more than one tone, and sometimes it gets to be so loud that I can't ignore it, and I just have to try to meditate to make it go away. But that's been something I've had for years. So I really think I've been getting a lot of downloads lately. And did yeah, it bother that's... anybody on Sunday? Was it Sunday? Saturday or Sunday, it was really, really bad. It was so bad, it gave me a headache. I mean, when I nod my head right now, I can hear the pitches change, you know, which I don't understand how that's happening, but one of them becomes really dominant when my head's down like this, and then a higher one when it's up like this. So no, that's I just, just thought I was crazy, you know. Your body's trying to realign with the frequencies. There's, to me, multiple tones playing all the time. And this has been going on for my husband and I for years. And it's because the sun has the, the tones going, the earth has the tones going, the incoming energy has tones going. And it really depends on, you know, how your system um, hooks up with it. And most of the time we just can really only identify one tone 
but there's always multiple tones in there and it's becoming more and more apparent. On, on Facebook, the woman that made that initial comment, and hi, Katie, glad hi. you can make it here. Um, she said, uh, Corey said that I've been getting songs in the dream state too. I find myself singing them in my head when I get up, but it's not, but it's not a song I have ever heard before. How cool is that? Very cool. So, okay, let's go on to our next one. That, that was a really cool topic right there. Um, Can I say something about the last topic? One sure. of the last topics. Was that seeing and hearing things or memory loss? Um, no, it was, it was before that. Waking um, up at two, between two and four, aches and pains? Not, yeah, aches and pains. Okay. I think it's important because it's not discussed in the community much. You know, always these, you know, uh, always the discussion about blockages is coming up all the time. And, oh, if you feel this, then you need to work on this. And, and most of us do. Don't get me wrong. We all have um, a set sets of clearings that happen as these layer as we get stripped away of layers. And you know, all of us have things going on. But enlightening enlightenment is what we're going through. We're going through stages of upliftment, and our bodies have not been there before. We're blazing new trails spiritually, but our bodies are trying to catch up. Our bodies are trying to come along with us. And we're working with our bodies to do that, um, some of us more than others. And some of us have come into this with um, prior physical agreements that we would go through. And we need to realize that enlightenment isn't just the spiritual journey, it's also the physical electromagnetic and electric journey that goes along with it of the light. And, you know, I've said this before, I think on chat is Many, 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 many enlightened people have passed, and we don't even know who they were. You know, and we don't know, uh, you know, it, these monks have been doing this for thousands of years. And there's, you know, the rainbow, the rainbow um, people that have, you know, done a very painful journey at the end of their life when they decided it was time to go. And, you know, left just their teeth and nails, I think, is all that's left of them. So we, we really want to give ourselves everything right now we can. These 10 weeks are going to be energetically new. I mean, the, the eclipse energy is new to me. All the eclipse energies I've gone through uh, and consciously have um, been very different from this eclipse energy. I didn't recognize the eclipse energy I was in. I do not any longer pay attention to the astrological windows because the eclipse energy I feel way before they start. And these 10 weeks that we're in that we've, we've just started in are going to be phenomenally um, strong. I, I'm experiencing that there's no, it, there's no like ups and downs that we're going to experience so much as we're going to just keep experiencing this elevation of energy. So um, for those that are experiencing a lot of pain, I just want to encourage you to love yourself more, to give yourself more, to do everything you can to support yourself and your environment and the people around you and, uh, and bless you for being willing to go through this. So what, what, wait, before you wrap that up, um, what, what are you feeling about the summer solstice? What kind of energies are different about this one than previous ones? Well, we have the eclipse, you know, the lunar eclipse next. And what is it? The 5th? June 5th. Next. Yeah. yeah. And that energy has been coming in the three eclipse energies have been coming in I, I i'm feeling like that's what i've been feeling for the last month and i finally recognized it 
because it's so different. So I'm my, literally my head is going numb. My entire head is going numb. My scalp is going numb. Um, my skin is going numb. The inside of my brain, it feels numb, but it I, feels, I feel that too. I, I'm getting that too. Continue, please. Very, very electric in my system. And then as I ground, as it flows through my system, okay, I think, oh, I'm doing good, right? The next wave comes, my head's numb again. The next wave comes, my head's numb again. And uh, I don't feel bad in my head, but that when, like, I'm sleeping with these, like, heavy, heavy duty hematite and magnetite grounding rocks, and I'm holding them as I'm trying to hold them as I sleep because I'm waking up with, you know, backed up energy in my head basically and I don't want that I don't want my body to have to go through this at too you know difficult of a level and drinking plenty of water getting everything I can for myself that I need to support myself so um yeah I think the numbing is is deaf and that oh and the energy coming up through the feet has I, I I've decided has to be associated with it. So Gaia's reacting have, has been reacting to me to these energies, and it's also related. I don't think the energy coming up through the feet is going to stop. I think it's going to increase. If you feel the bottom of your feet like hot irons, it's not the weather. It's the energies coming up. So everything's coming up and meeting and we are being the pillars of light of humanity we are processing it grounding it and i you know dealing with it but the for me the first thing is to acknowledge it and once you acknowledge it it does get easier because mm -hmm. you know what to do more yeah. or less <laughs> yeah. yeah that makes sense yeah yeah I'm, I'm just looking forward to you know working through these energies and staying as grounded as possible. And I think that is the key to just remain grounded, get, get out and ground as often as you can right now, more than ever. The other thing that helps me is, um, has been helping me, uh, and it's not because I'm not grounded, is group medita meditation in a group or doing a healing for someone, um, whatever you know comes up. Uh, it really is helpful because it's moving such a huge energy, you know, that there's no, it's, it's just, you know, you bring in Niagara Falls, your energy is going to move, it's going to ground, it's going to do all those things and bam, you know. So um, I'm, lo I'm loving that when, you know, <laughs> if I get the call, I'm there, bam. I'm like, yeah, let's move this energy. <laughs> um, if I meditate or, or do any of the other things that I do, I move quite a bit of energy, but there is, there is something about getting the call, you know, mm -hmm. it really moves the energy massively. So. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, thank our, you. Next, our next one is uh, feeling out of body. I've had that where, you know, for me, it's that experience. Like when you're, when you're at the grocery store and you're, you're feeling like there's a zombie apocalypse going on around you and you, you know it's almost as if it's surreal um you're walking around and you finally you might connect with the person that that's awake and aware and you make that connection just through eyes maybe a nod and that's it that's all you have to do but um it's just your surroundings are so surreal it does almost feel out of body but um I'm, i don't think that's specifically what they're they're getting at, but that's that's what I'm feeling anyway. Are, are any of you feeling that that like you're kind of out of body? Only when I go to the store, just like you said, exactly what you just said. Yeah, yeah. When the waves hit, when the waves come in, I'll I'll sometimes feel like I'm just floating away mm -hmm. for a little while, and then I you know. And, but it's really woo. <laughs> the next one is periods of deep sleeping. You're resting from all the acclimating and are integrating as well as building up for the next phase. 
or days of extreme fatigue, your body is losing density or going through intense restructuring. Um, I found that in the last, gosh, month at least, I need, I need a nap in the afternoon sometime at some point in the afternoon. It doesn't matter whether I've slept, you know, eight hours the previous night or, you know, 10 hours. I still need that nap. Is anyone else feeling that need of nap? Is anyone else feeling, you know, the periods of deep sleeping that, you know, you're getting that those energetic upgrades? We already discussed it, but yeah, me, definitely. I slept uh, like 16 hours. Then I went to bed at the regular time, slept the whole night straight through for once, didn't wake up, took two naps the next day. So, yeah, and that was during that whiteout period. So, yeah. That's a lot of wow. sleep. Wow. We, we had already sleep. talked so, about, I mean, I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Are you, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I'm just doing a wow. Like, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. we, we had already talked about, <clears throat> I mean, really for the past, my spiritual awakening actually happened in 2014. And ever since then, my sleep pattern has pretty much been three to four hours <laughs> a night and no naps during the day. And I mean, I've, I've been getting by for years now on three to four hours a night when I used to be a nine hours a night kind of guy, you know, I would go out at 10 o'clock and I wouldn't, sometimes I'd sleep until two o'clock the next afternoon kind of thing, you know, but uh, that's happened. And then, like I say, the other day, if I do take a nap, if I get to sleep for an hour, that's a miracle to me. And the fact that I slept for about six hours straight during the day, I mean, like, that's something that's happened to me before because I mean, like, I hate to say it, you know, I keep talking about the good old army days, but over in Germany, let's just say that they have things that they drink to keep you awake so you can do things, you know, kind of like super, super energy drinks. And uh, we had a three day pass on the line for having an inspection. And so me and everybody in my room, we said, man, we're going to do everything we can to get this three day pass. And they, I let them talk me into drinking some of this stuff. It was called uh, X-22, but I think the GI term for it was JP-4, which is rock, it, it's uh, jet fuel, right? You're supposed to drink it and then just keep going for like two or three days. And I drank it. And then I went to sleep for about six hours. Then I got up and I cleaned the whole room over again and over and over and over and over while everybody else was sleeping. And man, we got that three day pass. But ever since then, I've just kind of felt a little discombobulated and that's the expression we use down here to, you know, like gobsmacked. You just don't really know what's going on. And all of a sudden your reality shifts. And that's what's happened to me, especially in the last week with all this really, really strong energy coming in. I realize now I've always been sensitive to it. I just didn't really know what it was until I, you know, hooked up with the star family here and you guys educated me. So, but yeah, that's that's my life you know <laughs> a lot of people on on facebook are are saying that that you know naps are necessary right now uh, carol is saying uh, vera uh nap daily a must um regularly regularly <laughs> now i can't sleep because, probably because of the naps right uh, marcus yes plenty of naps waking up in the morning exhausted that's interesting yeah uh, probably doing a lot of work in the astral plane Right. Anyone else? It's not that, but I have to go. I got to go to work. <laughs> okay, Jacqueline. Thank you for checking in. All right. Bye. Okay. Heightened sensitivities to your surroundings uh, is the next one. Crowd, noise, food, TV, other human voices. Uh, you're just sensitive to everything, right? Various other stimulations are t barely tolerable. Um, you also overwhelm easily and become easily overstimulated. That happens to me with my hearing. And I, I thought it was because of the blood pressure, but my blood pressure is normal, uh, is, has normaled out. Um, so it's just like very acute hearing that I have right now. Anyone else feeling oversensitive in any of those areas? I don't remember what you just said. <laughs> it's heightened sensitivities to your surroundings, like crowds, yeah. noises, food. I've had that my whole life. Yeah. Uh, Me too. Uh, yeah, I prefer um, 
you know, being the introvert anyway, so <laughs> you know, staying away from the large crowds and noises and stuff like that. So small doses. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, man, maybe that's just me getting old. I got <laughs> like where I have to put the in front of everything, the YouTube and the, the Facebook. <laughs> I'm getting old. Uh, you don't feel like, here's number 11, you don't feel like doing anything. <laughs> You're in a rest period, rebooting, your body knows what it needs. In addition, when you begin reaching the higher realms, doing and making things happen becomes obsolete as the new energy support the feminine of basking, receiving, creating, self-care and nurturing. Ask the universe to bring you what you want while you are enjoying yourself and having fun. Um, so laziness, don't feel like doing anything. Anyone feeling that? Yeah. <laughs> Couch yeah, love. I'll vote for that one. Yeah. Sometimes in the morning I think, boy, I've got things to do. And I look around and it's dark already. I go, damn, where's the day go? <laughs> I'm too much of a workaholic for that. <laughs> I can't. I got too much to I'm, do. Uh, I'm a workaholic. <laughs> I used to be one. I used to be on duty 24/7, 365. You know, and like when the when the when the button got pushed, we had to be in our vehicles ready to go that minute, no matter what you were doing the night before. You know, so mm -hmm. I'm kind of recuperating from that now. I'm training myself to not be that way. I guess my body knows it needs rest, and there I am. You know. Mm -hmm. The next one is an intolerance for lower vibrational things of the 3D. This is reflected in conversations, attitudes, societal structures, uh, healing modalities, etc. So, uh, you know, just everyday <laughs> mundane crap, in other words, I, I, I guess would be the, well, do you have an intolerance for everyday crap? <laughs> that would be me, yes. <laughs> nope, yes. me too. Me too. Because I have to deal. You guys don't even know these people that I have to deal with at work. Okay. I can't do it. I can't do it. I, I used to love uh, the whole uh, criminal Take investigation them. series, CI Las Vegas, CI whatever, because I thought it was really interesting. But then I noticed how bloody it is. And all of a sudden, I just can't watch that anymore. I just don't want to watch people bleed and suffer, you know, or die. So... My I can't watch war movies anymore. I used to be the biggest war movie fan in the world, but now my favorite war movie is it's uh, the best years of our lives about how vets readjusted after the war. So, my ex-wife was one of those people that watched those, uh, you know, CS whatever those. Uh, I I don't know what the hell they were. I couldn't be anywhere near them. And this was like 10, 15 years ago because I just didn't like the vibration of all that death and killing. And there's always people that are being cut up or shot or murdered or you know, I that's just not for me. I'm, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. When I was saying people at work, the, the people at work is I work with a, with 26 women. Okay. And they all just blah, 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 blah. That's all I hear when they talk because, you know, they're just judging and talking about each other and, I'm just, I, I actually have a sign put up at my little area that says, this is a work zone, so keep your BS out. <laughs> so you're doing like the reverse yes. Charlie Brown with adults things. We're never, you know, in those cartoons, when an adult speaks, all the kids hear is wah, 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 wah. Well, now when the kids speak, all I hear is wah, 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 wah. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Amen. that was what, hey, they were doing that today. Somebody was complaining about somebody else, and I'm like, listen, get over it. <laughs> just get over it. Just fucking get over it. <laughs> you want to just grab them and like, wake up, grow up, and, come and on. Then somebody, you know? I know, I know, and then somebody else came up and said, can you believe she went and told on me, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, listen, you're already one up on her. You can read, write, and spell. Leave it alone. The next one we have is a loss of desire for food and or sleep. Now, we talked about the loss of desire for food. Is anyone having a loss of desire for sleep? That's not me. I, if anything, I need lots of it. 
absolutely. It, it, it varies with me. There are days that I can sleep like crazy. I take naps through two or three hours. And then I have days I just don't feel like going to bed. Or when I'm in bed, I just don't sleep. And then after a couple of hours in bed, I just get out and sit down. You should down. be sleeping now, Vera. You should be sleeping now. What time uh, are you supposed to know, be up? Crazy. In two hours? Two hours? You're supposed to be at what? At two hours? You told me four. You told me four hours an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, my alarm goes off at six. But I had a bad day today. I found some stuff out. I, and that's something I have to, I can't, I can't call the, the, the person until tomorrow, probably not until then, Tuesday. But it's something I got to get hold of. Otherwise it keeps going and going and going. Is that, and that's interfering with your sleep right now? It's because you, you're thinking about it so much? Well, I will not say how I felt, but pissed off and all the things. Because the last trick, I need to get control over my money. But there's something happened that's probably put my dossier at the courthouse on the bottom. So it probably, my, my gut feeling is it's going to take another month, two months, maybe three months before I get control over my money. Well, we all hope that, you know, it all gets resolved quicker than that for you, you know. Yeah, I, I do have to get after it. I have to get on it because as far as I found out, the payments for the court was done six days too late. So then your dossier goes to the bottom. So. That really sucks. Somebody was supposed to put it in for you? I filed it in beginning of February. Then my financial administrator got it through court and they agreed. And then I got a letter at the beginning of April that it had to be paid before April 12th. And the one is on my financial dossier says she called court and that it had to be paid after the 14th of April. And she paid it to the 18th. And I know I'm right because when you get that letter that it has to be paid, it's 14 days it has to be in. And the date that that letter in it the the that bill was dated March 28. So that's the last trick, and I know. Who's behind it? And that's why I have to get my money out of there. The company is good, but some of the employees are, uh, well, I won't say what I think about them. On that note, we, we do are going to move forward here. Yeah, <laughs> With, sorry. Please, that, that's okay. That's okay. We you know, hope that you get that all resolved sooner than later, though. Um, the next one is a sudden disappearance of friends, activities, habits, jobs, or and residences. I think a lot of us have gone through that one where we've lost longtime friends, you know, that that don't understand, you know, the direction that we've had headed into. And here we are, you know, um, you know, trying to talk about things that awaken people talk about, you know, chakras, uh, chemtrails, um, you know, stuff like that. The, the, the event. And, but you can't do that with a lot of the people that you've grown up with, right? So who's experienced that? What have been your experiences with that? 
Tell building us about seven. It. What's that? Building seven. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That's all you got to say. And they'll be like, huh? Yeah. Oh, that, that collapsed too? <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, there was all that gold in there too? Yeah. <laughs> What about friends? Have you, um, like, friends that you went to school with, Brian? Can you talk to them about this kind of stuff? Uh, no. You know, I've, I've never really um, attempted, so it's never been a, a topic. Right. There's a few I can talk, talk to about this, and I'm, I'm grateful for, the, for that. Um, the majority, probably not. No, they look at me like I'm crazy. And that's okay, you know. Um, I, I wrote an article, so your spiritual awakening cost you some friends, and it was because of a, a friend, I, my best friend that I had to unfriend on Facebook because he was just ridiculing everybody that was making comments, good comments about, you know, spiritual conversations that we were having, and it was just time to move away and on from that person. So it is what it is. I, I think, think people, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. I, I was just saying that's happened to all of us losing, you know, disappearance of friends. Yeah. Go ahead, Katie. I think when you talk to people, it's obvious where they're at because of the way they show up. And, you know, it's um, always shocking if I can fit something uh, spiritual into a conversation with a lot of people. And it's really, the people I have in-depth conversations with are people I mostly have met online, not in my life <laughs> because of the, well, my location has a lot to do with it, but, and my old vocation had a lot to do with it, teaching, um, you know, teaching all different levels of school that people get, especially teachers they get in their classroom and they're the only adults and they get into their box and it gets real hard to relate to other people in their box you know and in general i think all of us have just we're all tired of it too we just want to just be ourselves and say what we think and talk the way we want to talk and it's it's challenging for all of us yeah oh i think i do all of that i think i pretty much say whatever i want to say i'm sure anybody who's ever talked to me in this group knows that <laughs> yeah well when it comes to spiritual conversations and people are going to look at you like they're a blank wall and you know i'm not i like it them. hey katie i do that just to scare the hell out of them <laughs> I'm not into they that. Don't, you know what? They don't. They don't get. They don't come near me. Okay, I'll tell you that right now. Stay away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I, I don't do that. Don't I've been. That. I've been working on the audio for your um your your uh, audio article that you have, and um I had to raise the volume on it because it wasn't. I couldn't. I could barely hear it. So I'm still working well, on that. Um, but it, it's it's almost done. And that's great. And I should have that uploaded to uh, N5D YouTube channel here soon. I didn't know that you had a master's degree as well. We both have. Yeah, I, I have a, I have an AS degree in engineering and math and a bachelor's degree in fine art and a master's degree in fine art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you know, it's, I love seeing that, you know, and obviously, you know, the education, I, I think you would agree doesn't mean diddly to us now in retrospect, at least not to me, um, because I, I know so many intelligent people that don't have an education at, at all um, that are just amazing people. But uh, that, that master's degree, what that does though, it gives us, it gives our genre credentials of, okay, we've achieved this much in our life. You know, we're not idiots here. You know, it, it's, it just stands up for everybody. For, for, at least the way I see it, you know, it's, it's representative of, um, of, uh, validity for, um, our genre, at least in, in certain areas, you know, well, you know, 
the the thing uh, about um, degrees to me at this point is I have this level of life experience and my life yeah. experience um, you know I say what my degree is and but you know like all degrees you have to take a huge variety of classes and do a huge variety of things and um, you you learn and grow in, in such a different way with through that experience. So that kind of gives people a, a sense of um, this person has commitment, you yeah. know, to their to their experience and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Not so much, but thank you for the audio. I will make sure the audio is louder. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay. So sorry about that. No, that's okay. That's no problem. I just brought it into um, this yeah. program called Mixed Craft and I jacked it up a little higher and uh, now I'll be bringing it into Filmora and adding some pictures to it and I'll get it out there as soon as I can it takes a while oh, that, that was kindness. my career I, I had a I was a broadcaster I did broadcasting for the army I did broadcasting in the civilian world I wound up being an executive producer for anyway usually when you're recording audio on some kind of device or something there's some kind of level indicator somewhere and you always want to make sure that it's at least halfway up because other than that, like you said, it comes out sounding like this when you try to report, you know, and it comes out muffled. So make sure you're, you know, if you have to, just get your mouth a little bit more closer to the microphone. That helps. That's, you know. Thank Especially you. if you're doing I'm... an audio only recording, nobody's going to see the video anyway. So, you know, get close. Yeah, I'm, I, I did that. I just, um, I'm, I'm doing a, 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 a I've shifted, uh, you know, last year, late in the last year, I had a, that huge shift of this work is done. I've been doing it for such a long time. Oh, no, and I, I didn't mean to imply you didn't know what you were doing. I'm just saying. No, that, no, you, you can because I, sweetheart, you can because I really didn't because I'm, my brain is wrapping around doing a whole new thing. So I will check that and it's a good tip. <laughs> And I mean, like, I'm, I want to get into energy healing. It's something totally off the wall for me. But after you have a Reiki treatment and you realize, wow, I needed that. That whole energy work thing, that energy healing, it, it comes for real. And uh, I'm really into sound energy. I love Tibetan brass bowls because when I play it, I have it in my hand and I feel the vibration going into my body. And it's just, you know, wow. So. That's it's why awesome. we're here. We can all help each other out with our little areas of expertise. Where and now, that was my previous life, you know. No, it's so, awesome, Gary. Thank you. You're so you know, welcome, man. Thank you. Thank you for everything because you've helped me out more than you'll ever know. Aw, bless you. Always, always, I mean, anytime, always. The whole, the whole thing about the the whole degrees and the you know the college education crap in my opinion, is that, you know, a lot of us that have gone through it uh, are heavily indoctrinated and, you know, they call it liberal arts for a reason. You get brainwashed when you're in college and those who haven't gone through college are probably much better off and are probably much more awake than the people that have advanced degrees. So anyone that does and has gone through college, um, BA, associates, masters, whatever, you know, and you're awakened, congratulations that you made it through all that indoctrination and didn't have to put up with the bullshit. Those of you who haven't and that are here, congratulations, because you didn't have to go through that crap either. So um, either way, we're all, we all found a way to be here, right here, right now. And congratulations to everyone that's here right now. Uh, we're gonna move on to our next one. You absolutely cannot do certain things anymore. When you try to do your usual routine and activities, it feels downright awful. You are evolving beyond what you used to be, and these people and surroundings no longer match your vibrations. Anyone feeling that? Like certain things you used to do, um, you don't, you're not going to do anymore. You know, like for me, it'd be you know going to the bars and clubbing and all that crap. I don't do that crap anymore. That's me, but it's been a while for me since I quit doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, back with the through the 2011 phase of this, you know, energies. Uh, I was done with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I had to give up a lot of things just simply because there's no time to do those things anymore or the energy because your energy is shifting so fast so much so constantly you really don't have a choice. I I think I've changed so much that I have I don't do anything that I used to do. Um, there's a lot of stuff, and I know there's some people in this room that know about some of the stuff that I used to do. But yeah, I can't do anything that I used to do. I am completely different. Completely. There's things that I used to do that I enjoy, but like Katie said, I don't have the time for it because I'm such a workaholic. I used to lo love going out and shooting hoops bowling golfing you know I, I, being being raised in upstate new york i played every sport you could throw in front of me from hockey to soccer football basketball baseball everything that and i i love playing sports but where do i find the time anymore i just don't have the time i'm, I'm always working so yeah time 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 doesn't exist remember that, yeah. That's why when you throw yourself into something you're passionate about before, you you know, you, you look up and you think it's been five minutes and it's been five hours. You know, yeah. like I love making music. I love recording stuff. And sometimes I get into it like sometimes I get inspired, you know, like a song comes to me and I get it recorded in several different tracks and several different parts in like 48 hours. And then after I'm done, I go, wow, it felt like I was working on that for a month, you know, right. but it was just a labor of love, you know. Yeah, yeah. Blink your eye and <laughs> five hours are gone. Yeah. Uh, number 16, experiencing emotional ups and downs, weeping. So um, is anyone going through those um, emotional swings? I know, Gary, you did with uh, Elaine Thorpe. You went through a big one then. Oh, boy. I, I, well, I, I've cried more in front of you people than I've cried my entire life. So, you know. Wow, what what can I say? I'm not ashamed of it anymore. It's who I am. I'm a Good. weepy kind of guy. Sometimes, you know, I get emotional. Nothing wrong with that. No, nah, man, it's Weep. who I am. It's you know, I'm I'm proud of the fact that I, you know, it, boy, you, you can't imagine how hard it was. You know, my throat chakra has been blocked forever, and I I kind of know why now. I had dreams about it. I I actually was one of the guys that was tortured to death during the Inquisition. I would I refused to renounce my religion and red hot poker shoved down your throat makes a big impression on you in many lives, you know? So it was real hard to do that. But ever since I've started talking now and I've been like, you know, I've had a psychic reading with Allie that blew me away. And then of course, when I talked to Jonathan and he actually called me out, I wasn't even asking a question. He was like, you know, talking about the guy who has the three angels around him and stuff. And, you know, it just, wow. And it was my mom, you know, and, my folks have been gone since 98 so it's, it's it was really good to connect again and to know they're with me you know what a wonderful thing to find out about yourself so it's all i mean what an incredible journey and you know that song right here right now there's no other place i'd rather be right amen man yeah. watching the world wake up from history you know so ryan you've gone through that the uh, ups and downs emotional ups and downs i think you mentioned that haven't you yeah, I had one this afternoon. <laughs> I was uh, down in my basement just doing, I, I have a wooden lathe and uh, I just got distracted for a little bit and then um, just a nice overwhelming uh, feel of gratitude just kind of took over for a few minutes and got back up and did some more work. And uh then I broke the piece I was working on. Then I got pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> From gratitude to being pissed off. <laughs> oh, yeah. I felt it all. Yeah. But, Gam uh, gamut of emotions. Yeah. Yeah. I think a, a lot of people find emotions are very inconvenient. And um, they don't fit in with their desire. They think they don't, it, the emotions don't fit in with their desire of the moment you know, whatever it is that they, you know, their ego center wants right then. And between the two, they really um, turn it into a, a blender of garbage. And then they come out of it upset or mad or angry. 
And, you know, when we realize that emotions aren't inconvenient, they are a beautiful, beautiful way for us to experience our life here. It changes everything, you know, yeah. and if you're willing to embrace it, it changes everything. So beautiful share, Ryan and Gary. <laughs> it's nice to hear the guys talk like that. Love it. Beautiful. Yeah. Be yeah, honest. Yeah. Well, that, that feminine energy is like, I've always had a strong connection with that. Because like my mom was, you know, she was an old country girl and it kind of runs in the family, you know. And yeah, I've something I've always had to deny because I'm a man, damn it. You know, well, you know, I, I am. I know I've been a warrior before. I know I've been a female before. I mean, I've, I've, all, I've started remembering all these past lives within the last two months. And it's just, it's like a joy ride now. Like I'm almost waiting for the next one to wash over me so I can experience it, you know. So somebody that, that helped me a lot out uh, just joined on Facebook, and that's my daughter, Brittany. Um, hi, Brittany. Um, and if it wasn't for her, none of us would be here right now. But she's the one that showed me that other side of myself, that softer side, you know, because she, you know, the, being the little princess that she was, you know, she just had me wrapped around her little pinky when she was younger and but she showed me that softer side of myself that I haven't seen since I was a kid. And, uh, you know, I'm very, very grateful for that. So thank you, honey buddy. Yeah, when yeah. you were younger. <laughs> when I was your kid. Yeah. When I was your age. I know. You're not younger than I am now. I was I, I, I didn't mind that. <laughs> She still got you wrapped around that finger, younger or not. <laughs> yeah, she probably does. Um, she's coming down here next month, so I can't wait. Um, it was my niece, and I have to go see her again pretty soon. I haven't seen her in a long time. But yeah, that was what all of a sudden, just seeing the world through her eyes. The first time she walked up and touched a tree, she had such awe in her eyes. And I was like, wow, I, need to, I went over and touched the tree. You know, I wanted to get that too. So, yeah, it, it helps. If it weren't for the ladies, all, all all men would be would be angst and rough edges, you know. Yes, I agree, definitely. Um, the ladies make it um, so much easier for us if we're willing to learn um, the lessons that they're teaching us. A lot of guys are just, you know, they they got that wall built up. We all had that wall built a lot, and I'm assuming that you guys did too. But uh, you know, the whole macho bullshit thing, but. You know, your woman will dig it even that much more if you can actually show that balance of emotions instead of, you know, being Mr. Macho Guy 100% of the time. Yeah. So it's good to see other guys here, too. You know, this is about the right proportion, though. You know, a lot, we, we, we need more men uh, joining us, waking up. Um, so, but I'm, I'm grateful that you guys are here right now. So thank you. Let's move on to our next one. A wanting to go home as if everything is over and you don't belong here anymore. Who feels that? <laughs> Stephanie, Gary, Diana, anyone else? Yep, Ryan, Gabby? I used to a long time ago, not anymore. No? You're ready to stay here for a while. I'm, I'm ready for as long as they want me here. Yeah. You're on a mission, right? Yeah, I have a I have a duty to fulfill. I'm gonna finish mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I you know I, the, way I feel, the way I feel about it is that we um, we only we only have like a little bit more time left in third dimensional reality, as far as I'm concerned, and um, enjoy it while we're here. You know, because we're gonna look back and say, you know, I wish I did more while I was there. Here's your chance. Do it. Greg? Yeah. I, my experience has been um, the last few years, I, I really don't remember that this subject prior to that too much because so much has gone on, but every time something crazy or weird or awful happens, especially with, you know, around people associated with the collective or I should say people that have not awakened or whatever, anything that's bothered me or touched me in a way that, you know, might 
uh, make somebody think, oh, I want to go home. I want to go, you know, away. What it's given me is strength to see why I'm here and a deeper dedication, um, inspiration. I've taken it as deep, deep inspiration because this is what needs to um, shift. This is what needs to um, go back to the light. And this is why I'm here. And I'm thankful that I can be here to support this, you know, um, collective experience. That's that's helped me tremendously to take it as inspiration instead of as it being hard on me. Let me ask you this, because you're you're in the the Pluto and Leo generation, the the, the generation that I absolutely adore. Um, when you were going through the and Gary as well, when you were going through the uh, Pluto and Leo generation, uh, you know you. Know, and if it's, well, let's say you've been in teaching for how long? I started teaching in 1997 when I was in graduate school. I taught undergrad and then I taught high school okay. in, in graduate school the last year. And then I went on to high school. Okay. How did you keep the energies from Pluto and Leo and maintain them all throughout while you were in a teaching position, how were you able to talk to anyone there about like stuff that we're talking about now? This is how I approached, um, um, I guess the way I approach people is people that were interested in what I was interested in, I, I would relate to them. But when at, like at school or students or anyone like that, I would have, even when I went and taught first grade and went down to elementary, because the high school kids were going insane, um, I used things like what I knew about the breath and taught the breath, or I would teach them, um, you know, I, I would approach it just in a teaching manner, the subjects, instead of trying to talk about it literally, like we are here. I, I would give it um, um, an, their perspective, like how can they grow from this subject and integrate it into the curriculum in some way. You know, sometimes I use Simon Says for elementary to integrate it in the curriculum yeah. just to get them moving. You know, I think I would have done the same thing, honestly. Um, <laughs> I love that. And then thank you for... Um, putting it that way because you know there's so many ways that you can teach that are kind of circumventing the normal way of teaching but you're still able to at least at least plant that seed with the kids you know and give them something that they might be able to grow later on in life so that's really cool well and it i used to also to teach myself you know that we're all learning and growing and so well, I was working on the breath for a very long time to breathe from my abdomen instead of the shallow breath. And so when I started more and more kids, I'd look at them, they're not breathing, they're upset, they're this, they're that. So I used the teaching of the breath, you know? So I got to do, I got to play with the kids, you know? Everything I could figure out how I could play with them you know, and they would learn and we would all learn and grow, the, the better I felt. Mm -hmm. well, that's beautiful. They used, uh, I was taught, first introduced to meditation in uh, fifth and sixth grade. In the fifth, by the end, by the last semester of fifth grade, they realized I didn't know how to read. And they realized, wait a minute, she should know how to read, you know? And I, that's when they decided, did a lot of testing and found out I was dyslexic. And they started teaching me how to read as a dyslexic. And one of the methods was for breathing, to sit down and do the meditation, do a short meditation, get myself ready, get my breath ready, 
get myself rested and then to sit down and read and I was able to focus better. And by the time I was in the sixth grade, I was ready to graduate on up to the middle school, seventh grade. But it, I didn't, ha I mean, I couldn't even read some of the simplest books. And that was most definitely during the era where kids were de slipping through the cracks because we didn't know anything about dyslexia at that time. We were just learning about it. And yeah, for when, those I, when of I was you in that, school, they, oh. they tested you like, the, like you got a standard test around about third grade. And then that determined whether you were going to stay in regular school, go to a special education school or go to a trade school, basically. I mean, we didn't have the, the people standing up for the, you know, the kids who are due to no fault of their own aren't quite as bright as some other kids. You know, they were shunned. They were put into another classroom. And uh, I can, uh, I just can only imagine how they felt, you know, like, oh, wow. So like what? Y'all think all I can do is make license plates? Well, I'm, I'm so glad is, it's changed now. I'm so glad it's yeah. changed that they're included, you know, because they, need, they, they belong here just like everybody else, you know? What's funny is uh, a dyslexic person is not necessarily less uh, intelligent. Yeah. They just have to learn to read and learn to look at things differently than than being taught. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't mean to say that that was. Oh bad. no, no, no! I mean, and what they found like myself, out myself in math, I could never show the work. I would always come up. With but the do right it answer, here. But yeah. I couldn't show how I got to the right answer. And I was it always until I trained myself. Yeah. Oh, I got to go back and learn how to do this and this and this and this mm -hmm. to get there. Instead of just wait a minute, it just comes to me. Bang! There it is. You know. So, and, yeah. yeah, that really messed me, me up too. <laughs> I, I didn't. Mean, I didn't mean only the slow kids. I mean no. I mean, kids. but what they did was, was they ended kid. up going. Yeah. They ended up going. Where did all of this come from? Because I mean, mm -hmm. I start. I'd start spilling off. I made stuff. straight D's in high school. And then I took the ACT and I scored like in the ninety fifth percentile. And my instruct my counselor said, "Okay, where have you been hiding for four years?" You know. Well, yeah. So yeah. You don't, don't make it a interesting of, enough. <laughs> a, a lot of people, um, most people that have um, disabilities, uh, a part of the problem initially is they get really, really bored in school. You know, whether you call it dyslexia or whatever you call it. And that boredom just takes them to, you know, a nowheresville because their families don't support them enough as well but what i wanted to say is some of the people i've met that the brightest people i've met has scored like 100 percent on sats and things like that and so many of them never did anything really with their lives but <coughs> play video games or just you know just didn't didn't do anything and they were like the brightest kids in the school and you know, had no, like, didn't have to do homework, didn't have to do anything. They just scored the highest on the tests. And, and so it or, or they turned mean, to addictions like drugs or alcohol or, you know. Yeah, but whether they had addictions or not, or video games or whatever, yeah. it, my, my point is, is that it, it doesn't, the test scores don't mean much. Yeah. In the sense of how the person's going to, you know, develop or and be developed it's it's really really up to the individual and mm -hmm. I, you know before diana said what she said i wanted to say well by the way everybody diana is really smart <laughs> you know <laughs> and uh it's amazing how in to me how many people i've met that are almost genius level that haven't done much at all with their lives and when i meet someone that has I'm nothing but compliments because, you know, you don't want to see someone that is that bright and capable, not contribute, you know, to humanity. You want to see them be out there and, you know, contribute. So right on. I'm going to quiet now. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I agree with you totally because, I mean, I was one of the bored kids. I never had to crack the books until I got into college. And then I had to train myself how to study. You know, I mean, in high school, like I said, I 
just just gave up because uh, of various things that happened to me. You know, very overweight, very shy, wore glasses, you know, stuttered. So let's pick on the frail guy. You know, anyway, no big deal. And so I actually had to leave home and go someplace else and kind of learn how to blossom and be myself, you know. And I mean, people love me working with them because I tend to try to do anything that needs to be done, you know, because I'm a team player. And so sometimes people just sit back and let you, I mean, like, I think the reason I became diabetic is because I was working a five hour radio board shift doing the entire production schedule everybody else was doing, so many spots a week, so many readers a week. Then my boss talked me into playing into his band. And next thing I know, I'm getting up at four o'clock on Friday morning and I don't get to bed until maybe eight o'clock or to nine o'clock Saturday, plus working twice of what everybody else was working. And so, you know, when it came time for me to get a medical discharge, I was wondering why it took eight and a half months to happen. Well, they didn't want to let me go because I was doing a lot, you know, I'm always kind of behind the scenes kind of guy until now. Now I'm speaking up for myself and I'm, talking too much but anyway yeah i i get that i'm i'm one of the guys that didn't really fit in but i was really successful in my career eventually because i learned what you had to do to you know succeed it's really if you put out 90 percent effort and everybody else is doing 50 percent, you look like a star you know you can't help it so there it is yeah. anyway sorry don't yeah. mean to dominate well, guys th thank goodness that you know you didn't get off track as far as having a life and having a full life because i see it i've seen it way too often so hey you had a life man that's awesome yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. yeah. uh it, it's i found you know like i can't wait my jeep's going to get fixed uh i found out how much it's going to be today i get it back before the end of the month and i'm already planning my road trip out to arizona to see my niece and also i've always wanted to go to the grand canyon so you know here i go so yeah my brother, though, poor guy, he just never, he never found traction, and he kept telling everybody he was going to be dead by the time he was 50, and he only missed it by four years, but he just basically thought himself to death, basically, you know, so. Was he as bright as you? It's a choice you? you make, you know, it's a choice. You, you either choose to be happy or not, and I finally realized, hey, I just would rather be happy than miserable any day, you know. Was your brother as bright? As you yeah well not quite he you know he he was well I, we have a very telling picture of us I found the other day going through my parents stuff that I finally got back from a angry ex and uh, I'm like three or four and he's five and I'm dressed in little fatigues my dad got me with a little helmet I've even got a little fake swagger stick and I'm doing like a British salute and grinning. And he was kind of dressed like a hobo. And I mean, he drifted around between so many careers and it was always his pride that got him down because also he never learned how to delegate anything. If he didn't do it, it didn't get done. So he, you know, he would just leap in and take over. He was the best assistant manager most of his bosses ever had because he did like 90% of their job for him because that's just the kind of guy he was. But in the end, you know, he got he got sweet talk by some guy to work to make a bar down in Tuscaloosa and he was going to be the chef. He was really good at cooking. He could cook up a storm. But the trouble is the guy talked him into doing most of the work to get the place ready. And then the dude who had the money and was the owner, basically, he just wanted to chase college girls around, and have somebody else, you know, run the business. So it went under. His health was broken, and within about three years after that, he was gone. So, you know, it's it's a choice you make. Anyway. Well, bless him. Yeah, I, I miss him to death. Uh, one of the best things I think I've ever come up with, and one of those songs I was talking about where the, the, the line just came to me out of nowhere. I was thinking about him on the way home one time from a trip. And the line, the more you tried, the less it mattered, came into my head. And I wrote the whole song about that. And then I realized it's also kind of about me. It's called Crash and Burn. One of these days, I'll share it with the world. But right now, it's still a little too private, you know. Anyway, thank you, Karen. And thank you, Greg. And I'm sorry for taking over again. I don't really want to do this anymore. I just want to listen and, you know, support everybody, man. No, you are. You're doing
fine, fine. Give it a break, Gary. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. Give it a break. <laughs> we didn't get a little <laughs> off track, but that's that's what happens in chats. We we do that. <laughs> We're gonna get back on track. Anxiety and panic is the next one. Uh, the next sign, the ascension symptom signs that we're talking about. So is anyone experiencing any kind of anxiety or panic? More. I used to get that all the time. Yeah. Breathing and meditation, man, it's just completely stopped all of that for the most part. Still mm -hmm. comes, but. What kind of meditation or, yeah, what kind of meditation do you do? Um, well, for the past year, I've been um, strictly Joe. De, uh, do, no, I can't speak. Joe Dispenza's meditations. Okay, yeah. Uh, um, Ali Hassan was just mentioning uh, for all. Doctor Joe Dispenza is a great help for his teachings with breath and yeah. so much more. So yeah, that's that's good. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're pretty good. Um, what's the other? Um, can't remember her name right now she does um trance i can see her face she's pretty well known esther oh esther. yeah 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 a couple um nice um meditations mm -hmm. okay but, yeah joe's joe's pretty good he's got some great work mm -hmm. i agree i agree definitely um anyone else panic Anxiety? No? Yes? No? <laughs> How about Unless, the I'll, I'll just say, oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Unless you count my granddaughter driving me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, also, I had a lot of that happen to me all throughout my life, and it's only been within the last maybe two or three months, you know, that I've kind of learned to step back and kind of recognize what's happening. And then it's just like you say, uh, Ryan, you know, deep breathing and just focusing and centering and then just let it wash through and let it wash on out. You know, that's to me, that's that's been a, a huge gift that I've learned from like people like Esther and uh, Wayne Dyer was a big inspiration for me. You know, he was the big got guru back in the 90s, but he did a movie called The Shift from Ambition to Meaning about two years before he passed and it talked about what we're talking about that especially guys once we get older and we look back on our lives we realize that all the money and all the toys we had don't mean crap it's the family and the legacy you leave behind you know that that really matter and so it's more about finding a meaning for your life rather than try to get the next shiny thing that they're trying to sell us you know that's to me that was a big thing yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, has anyone experienced night sweats and hot flashes? Yes. Okay. Horribly. Oh yeah, but they're not. They're not. Well, they're not. I, I spend a lot of time convincing women that you're not having a hot flash <laughs> because a lot of women will say, "Oh, I'm having a hot flash," and I said, uh -oh. "Well, did you have your blood test done? Your hormone?" Oh, yeah, yeah, I really don't have any hormones. Then you're not having a hot flash. You are going through the ascension energy. The, and, oh, no, no, I'm having a hot No, you know, I just go back and forth with some people. And um, night sweats is really, really common, especially lately with the heat. The energy's been so hot for the last month. Oh, my God. I have to have a fan blowing on me with my air conditioner. I get so hot at night. Now, during the day, I'm cold. When it's the hottest outside, you're cold. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's been really real, just out there. You know, it's like, what the hell? It's mm -hmm. hot outside. Why am I freezing? So I'll step outside in the sun, you know, and then come back in and enjoy the cool. But at night, the house is nowhere near cool enough. Even with the AC and a fan. Right. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> well, you know what? I, that that pretty much wraps up all those ascension symptoms that we were talking about. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people that are experiencing a lot of things. I, the thing I found the most interesting was that thing about, you know, hearing the radio when there's no radio on. 
and and that that wasn't even on that list but somebody brought that up in the chat room on facebook and so many of us have experienced that i thought that was really quite fascinating so anyway I'm, i think we're going to wrap it up at that we've been going on for like two and a half hours so i just want to thank everyone that has joined us here on Zoom, as well as everyone that joined us on Facebook tonight. I apologize to those who are expecting to find us on YouTube, which you're watching right now on the recorded version. Thank you for joining us there as well. Uh, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and the bell notification. And um, I'll say that, you know, until the next time, we're going to sign off at that. I'm sending you all infinite love and light. Love you all that joined us and that are watching. Namaste to all. Good night to all. Namaste. Beautiful souls. Nice. Beautiful. Thank Good night, you. Star Good night. Looking Bye. forward Good night. to the next time already. Sweet. <laughs>